Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter five talking about the improving the testing process and continuing ahead with the next segment of the same that is 5.4, improving the test process with TMMI. Now, basically the TMMI stands for Test Maturity Model Integration and it has basically an integration of several components put together which helps your organization to set up and uh, improvise your overall process and meets the expectation or end goal of the improvement plan. And that's where the TMMI caters with a maturity model which is basically composed of five maturity levels and is intended to complement CMMI. Now, what exactly that stands for? Of course, TMMI has a set of standards that could be adopted in the testing process by any IT organization in order to improve their testing process and hence the testing standard altogether. Now, TMMI is often regarded as a complementary practice to CMMI as it sets the specific maturity levels and guidelines which together helps to improve the maturity level in terms of CMMI levels. So it's exactly the same thing. It's just that the CMMI is the parent organization which governs that and TMMI is the model which you basically follow and has some uh, great standards which you actually establish as a part of the entire process in order to deal with it. Now that's what we will be exploring in this tutorial that what exactly are those standard levels which a TMMI basically takes care of and understand the same. To get started with TMMI maturity levels, the level one is the very first level called as initial. The initial level represents a state where there is no formally documented or structured testing process. Tests are typically developed in an ad hoc way after coding and testing is seen as the same as debugging. The aim of testing is understood to be proving that the software works. So these are awarded or basically regarded to those organizations who do not have a predefined approach or methodology which an organization can make use of in order to run or complete the testing process. And as you see that the words are coming in like ad hoc or something which is not predefined, non-structured process. That means nothing is well planned, nothing is well determined. You just collect the information and you test it more of like exploratory and ad hoc way of interacting with the product and try to you know find as many defects as possible and you know give that quality product at the end of the day of course you may have a lot of flaws in that you may skip or uh, leak a lot of defects to the uh, you know production or even to the end user so there are flaws in that but of course this is for the organization who gets started with the testing process or probably wouldn't have you know, done any kind of testing before. And uh, the aim of the uh, testing here is understood to be, of course, uh, proving that the software works. That's the only end goal what they have, but they have nothing from the point of, uh, you know, working on improvising that how they can actually, you know, do better instead of just delivering what they're doing. And the more important thing here is also that testing is relatively called as debugging because it's all about finding the defects, uh, just not about like improvising or preventing or addressing the risk areas and so, so many things related to that. While coming to the level two, it's called as managed, where the manage is the second level is attained by an organization when ten testing process are clearly separated from debugging. It's just not an ordinary process any longer. And you can actually say that testing is about defining quality in the product whereas debugging is just about finding errors in the thing so as far as you can create a difference by having an established process something which you generally do as a part of testing but does not conflict or you know relates to anything which you do in development so you can call it as managed and this time it is more structured but not completely so it can be reached by setting test policies and goals introducing the steps found in the fundamental test process including the planning uh, test design and all and implementing basic testing techniques and methods which includes your equivalence partition boundary value analysis or maybe from the white box or maybe from the experience space and it's just not limited to that you may have a fundamental test process being established right like how you do test planning test analysis test design test implementation test execution and test reporting also you do establish a test environment which would be required in order to run the test it's just not that 
you can run your test in any environment and so on. And you establish a test policy and strategy which makes it different from the debugging. Coming to level three is defined. This is the third level uh, uh, which an organization can achieve when testing process is integrated into the software development lifecycle. That means now you have the capabilities and maturity to align your testing activity with those of the development activities which you have learned again in the foundation about the characteristics of good testing which basically sets up that how testing team should coordinate with a corresponding development activity to detect defects much earlier and prevent them in order to save time and money both. So, uh, and this is definitely documented in more formal standards, procedures, and methods. Reviews can take place now, and uh, there should be a distinct software testing function that can be controlled and monitored. So, mainly here uh, we are tailoring our testing activities to those of the development activities and at the same time we are making sure that we are aligning and relating those corresponding activities so that we can you know one-on-one -on -one kind of you know response uh, for different activities being performed and this can definitely add a lot of value to your process uh, in order to help you prevent the defects much earlier in the life cycle so you do have a test organization here you have test training programs happening uh, the testing life cycle and the integration uh, with, with respect to the development activity or peers review which can happen non-functional testing can be established at this point of time that means you're just not limited to basic testing you can do specialized level as well coming to the level four the level four is achieved by an organization when the testing process is capable of being effectively measured and managed at an organization level to the benefits of this specific project. Now, of course, you see that this is where we are talking about the level four, where you are just not performing certain set of activities like static or dynamic, functional or non-functional, white box or black box. You are also having a list of matrices or particular KPIs, that is key performance indicators, which can actually start evaluating the effectiveness of your activities. So no matter you conduct static testing, but you have a matrix to check uh, the efficiency of your activity performed. Similarly for unit testing, capturing the number of defects you identified using unit testing, comparing that with the integration level, and you try to see that how well your each level is trying to respond. So as far as your process is now measurable or monitorable in terms of like how exactly you can find out the outcome and efficiency of your process is what you call it as measurable or measured level four. So here you must have learned how to uh, make use of great matrices which you have. At the end of course the level five which stands for optimized the final level represents a state of test process maturity where the data from the testing process can be used to help prevent defects and the focus is on optimizing the established process. Now here we are not talking about the review or static testing which is of course to prevent defects. Our question here is more on the point of like when developers create a module we test it and when you test it you may get a hundred number of defects or maybe 500 defects but the question is why are we getting that so minimizing uh, your mistakes is what you call it as optimizing level that means now you no longer need to you work on your process you are going to work something which assist your process like you know the uh, misunderstanding inconsistency in the data ambiguities in the information misunderstanding you know clarification issues incomplete information so you try to overcome those barriers at this level so that means you have got everything well established with measurable and controllable process but now you're trying to overcome those barriers as well which are actually introducing the defects so that's what is called as optimizing level and that can definitely be uh, done with help of defect preventions, test process optimization, uh, deploying a contr quality control method like QMS team can take care of uh, determining the best QA practices and so on. So that's what is basically your team MI which helps an organization to climb the steps right from the level one to reach out to the level five which basically gives you the optimization level as well qualified organization on uh, healthy management of your test process. Well, that was all we had from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.